morning, everyone. Hope everyone had a blessed night and or a blessed day. Let's start off with a word of prayer before we do our devotional. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We, we thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for loving us and taking care of us. We thank you for always being there, Father God. Father God, we just thank you for your grace and mercy in our life. Father God, as we partake in this devotional, Father God, help us to understand it. Help us just not to glaze through it, but help us to apply it. Help us to be able to enjoy it. Father God, brothers and sisters, reading our curious. Father God, bless them. Father God, bless them with wisdom and knowledge. Bless them how to handle these situations. Bless them with in their finances and their life, Father God. Father God, just bless them from head to toe with health, with physical strength, Father God. Father God, we just thank you for the day. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Okay. We have started a new week, so we get a new memory verse. Romans 15 and 7. Therefore, receive one another, just as Christ also received us, to the glory of God. Verse of the day. Psalms 40, 17. As for me, it says, I am poor and needy. Let the Lord keep me his thoughts. You are my helper and my savior. Oh, my God, do not delay. Topic, my savior, my helper, and my God. Affirmations, I'm going to say it. Pause behind each one to give you opportunity to say it if you like. God is my helper. I am saved by the best. I am in God's thoughts. God isn't delayed in my life. Thoughts. The Lord will help us and save us from anything. We don't have to, to beg for him or beg him or cry. He will always protect us. I have felt the lowest in my life and he has always been to comfort me. I haven't looked to people or anything. I, I just look to him. He loves me so much. Whether you are feeling, whatever you're feeling today, wherever you're dealing with, know he loves you. Know he cares. And know he ne He would never leave, let you deal with your this, this or any problem on your own. David went through so many battles, so many ups and downs and, and problems. Ezekiel was used to heal a lot of people and solve people's problems through prayer. He even stopped the rain from falling, but both of these men knew they needed God through the pain, through the situations, because we must understand that Jesus came to save our souls, but he also come to heal our brokenness and to help us through. It doesn't matter if we are poor or have all the riches in the world. He is there through it all. Psalms 57 and 3 says, he will sin from heaven and save me. He will put to shame him who tramples me. God will send out his steadfast love and his faithfulness. We don't have to worry about protecting ourselves from the world or defending our good name because he will trample over what, what tries to conquer us. He will crush anyone that tries to hurt them that, that calls upon the name of the Lord. Not one time can we second guess his love, but never can we ever second guess his dedication to us because his dedication never changes. It never alters. It never dries up. His love grows for us every day. In this world, you will feel all kinds of things. I won't sit here and say that you feel love from others at all times, that, are, that you'll be on the top of the world at all times. But what I will say is this. When you walk in the shadow of death, we don't have to fear. When We don't have to worry when, because we, he will be there to help us and look past what men sees. Men sees our fancy clothes and our high-priced shoes and our fancy cars and, the, and with the bells and the whistles. But God sees our heart. And he sees how big it is. Give all your thoughts and troubles and problems to him. Stop looking at what you see and what others see. Look at what God sees. Psalm 69, 16 says, Answer me, O Lord, for your steadfast love is good. According to your abundant mercy, turn to me. God has an ongoing love to, for his own. And God has an abundant supply of mercy. He might not move when you won't. He might not say what you want to hear. But what he says will always be true and precise. I can remember thinking I had this right or I did this right. And I and in the moment I placed that thought there, he will say immediately, no, you didn't. You should have done X, Y, and Z. Yes, it hurts when he says, and, and yeah, it's, it's not what I wanted to hear. But when we are people of God, take what he says and build on it and change the narrative. He will always be there to see us through. He's, he, he hears us when we speak. The author said to turn to me because a lot of times we think he doesn't see us. And if he did, he will see how much we are going through, right? 
and how much our heart is hurt, right? Pain is something that lasts a little while. Anger stays for seconds, but joy stays for a long time. We, as people of God, must allow God to fill our hearts with joy. In order to do this, we must believe he hears and sees us. Today, if you feel that no one sees you and you see your heart and, and look over you, Try to focus on God. Focus on his love for you. Focus on his mercy for you. You can have it all and still not feel good enough. You can have it all and still feel you you have failed. You can still have it all and not have God. Sometimes having it all and relying on and waiting for the world's acceptance can be the last thing you need. Today, focus on God and rely on him and for what you need. Prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your your for healing our brokenness. We thank you for healing every wound. Father, you can take away any pain we are feeling. You can take away the hurt we endure. We place it at your feet. Father, we ask you right now to help us to love you as you love us. Help us to focus on you. Lord, thank you for allowing us to be in your presence. Thank you for allowing us to be near you. Lord, as we go through our day, help us to apply this word to our lives. Help us to stay in your hands, Lord. We ask you all these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So the topic today is my Savior, my helper, my God. He can be all those things for us. Um. The first thing I, I want to touch on is that the world is never going to look at your heart. They, they're going to look at what money you're you're throwing around. They're going to look at what um, shoes you have on or what can you buy and where you can go. And, and a lot of people are like, I just want to travel the world. I want to travel the world. And they go all these places. They do all these things. They eat all these things. And they get back home and they go back to their lives. But if sometimes if you check some of these people spiritual lives. They haven't went nowhere with God. They haven't tried to grow their relationship with God. They haven't spent a single moment with God because everyone is trying so hard to be these people that let me, let me show Facebook what I'm doing. Let me, let me show Snapchat what I'm doing. I used to have a Snapchat account and I still do. And I used to just, every time I had a moment, click, every time I see this, click and you upload it and people see it. And people see what you're doing. And people are like, oh, you're doing that? Are you going this place? Are you doing? People are, are, are all about the instant and what they can see and what they can get. They're not about, okay, let me show you a picture of what I'm reading, which is the word of God. People don't want to see people jumping and shouting. People don't want to see people pull up at the church. People don't want to talk about the spiritual battles and spiritual warfare. People want to talk about where you're going, what food you're eating, what restaurant you went to last. What movie you went and see? We have to stop making that a priority in our life and start making God a priority in our life. Yeah, it's nice to go places. Yes, it's nice to go on vacation. It is. But have you went somewhere with God? Have your relationship went to another level? Some people can't say that because they're too busy chasing things because they're like, I got to live my life. I got to do me. I got to live my truth. You live your truth. In doing your life, you're going to wind up losing out on having a relationship with Christ. I have to cut it really harsh here for people. And, and then if I offend anyone, I'm sorry. People can continue. We as people can continue to do our lives. We can continue to search for these, these vacation homes and, and these R&B&Bs or whatever they call. We can continue to... I uh, want more money. I want more money. I got money. I got money. We can continue to look at those things. In the moment that you don't wake up, where you're going is not going to be a great place. It's going to be hell. And people don't like to hear that. They don't. They, they like to hear that, oh, okay, well, I gave my life to God. I should be good. Yes, you're good, but you need to be better. Every day we need to strive to be better. And in the verse today, they, they said, um, let's look at the verse real quick. As for me, since I'm poor and needy, let the Lord keep me in my thoughts. You are my helper, my savior, my God. Do not delay. The poor and needy, God doesn't want us poor. Like he, he doesn't want us to have the need. But the poor and needy reach out for God because they know they need him. They know they have to depend on him for the next meal. 
They know they need to depend on him where to go. They know they need to depend on him how to survive in this world. So the needy and the poor are the ones that always search out for God, always searching out a better way. Now, you have some needy and poor people, they, they don't care. But I'm talking about the ones that are truly saved. And the reason why these people say this is because Jesus said in the Bible, he says, it's harder for a rich man to go through the eye of a needle. Because a rich man is worried about all his things and living life. And let me take this with me. Let me take that with me. But a poor person go right through the eye of a needle and have no problem because it has nothing. They have nothing. Now, don't get me wrong. The Lord wants to bless us. The Lord wants to elevate us. I had this guy one time I was talking to. Um, he asked me, what did I drive? He said, I drive a BMW, blah, blah, blah. I said, I drive a Corolla. Just like that. He said, don't you want God to give you more than just a Corolla? As I'm getting the point A and point B. So I don't care about cars like that. He said, well, I just think you're, you're just kind of undermining God. I said, not undermining God. If I wanted to have a BMW, if I wanted to have a Porsche, I can go get those things. But what I want is just comfort going to A and B. What I want is depend on God. What I want is not to drive around the city. Because I know me. I, I know me. And you know yourself. I would drive this car if I had a BMW. Like, it's everything. I'll be so obsessed. I'll be driving everywhere. Instead of being at home or being somewhere reading the word, I'll be in my car sitting like, oh, look what I got. Look what I got. Because I know me. I I had a problem where I thought everything about me was just the greatest. I had pride. And this, I know a car like that will give me pride. And I don't want pride. Now, if someone can have that same car. It don't even bother them. It could drive around, depending on Christ. But I know me. I'm happy with my Corolla. I don't need a BMW to know that God loves me. I don't need a million dollars to know that God loves me. And you got to understand that too. God can bless you with just waking up in the morning. And that blessing right there should be enough. But people overlook that because they're like, well, he didn't bless me today. He blessed you to wake up. He blessed you to talk. He blessed you to have your thoughts processing because someone else didn't wake up. Someone else thoughts are not processing. Someone else is in the hospital room. They're trying to figure out why he didn't wake up. He's in a coma. Someone else had a different situation than you. So you're blessed. You're not blessed with what you have, but you're blessed with the Lord. You're blessed with favor because something else could have happened to you other than what you think you should have had. Another point I want to point out is that, who was it? It says, answer me, O Lord, for your steadfast love is good. According to your abundant mercy, turn to me. God's love is so amazing. I have been in this world and had everything. I think I've told y'all this and had everything and still didn't feel that kind of love. And when I gave my life to God, I felt so much love, so much happiness I remember feeling so happy. My mom and dad was like, Laura, what's, what's wrong with you? I said, I feel so happy. I feel so good. And I started crying because I knew I was finally saved. I knew I didn't have to worry about anything. I didn't have to cry. I didn't have to feel alone because he's always there with me. We have to stop looking at what we can get and look at God giving us things and look at what God can give us, which is air to breathe which is going from A to point B in our cars, from having a blessed job. You understand? Let's go look at our first reference, Psalm 75. Like I said, I want to clarify this again. I'm not saying that God can't bless us and won't bless us with expensive cars. I'm not saying that at all. God can bless anyone with anything he likes, but it's up to us to have self-control to know that those things do not become our idol. If you have it, go to verse 5. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come quickly to me, O oh God. You are my helper and my deliverer, Lord. Do not delay. We, he's asking God to come quickly. He said, you are my helper. You're my deliverer. I, I depend on you. Please don't wait another second. Please don't leave me in this moment. Please don't don't. Cause me have to deal with this on my own. And God would not oh, God would not allow us to, to deal with something on our own. He will always be there to be like, well, I, well do this, well, do that. It's up to us to apply it. But he knew who to go to. He said, God, come quickly. Come, 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 come quickly. 
because I can't do this. I, I'm afraid. I'm lonely. And we all have been to those spots in our life where we ask God, please come quickly. Please solve this issue. And sometimes God has already given us the answer, but we don't want to hear that answer because it's not what we want to hear. It's, it's not what, what, what makes a big turnaround fast. It's baby steps. And a lot of us don't want to do the baby steps. We don't want to crawl before we walk. Some of us want to get up and just keep walking. But God will come quickly to us and solve our problems. But if he's giving you the answer, you need to do what he says because his answer is not going to change. I don't care how many times you ask him. That answer is not going to change. It's going to be the same answer. It's going to be the same answer. Go to Matthew 8 and 20. Go to Matthew 8. Verse 20. Jesus replied, foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. In this phrase from verse 18 to 22, Jesus was to asking the crowd, you know, telling the crowd the cost of following him. He had one man in verse 19 says, teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus replied to them, foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. Another person said, Lord, first, let me go bury my father. And Jesus said to him, but, but follow me and let the bury, dead bury his own. See, when we follow him, he's telling us right here is that you can't worry about what you need to get done. You can't worry about, oh, I don't have this or I'm lacking that. You must be a follower of him through anything. And some of us, when the following gets tough, when the road gets dark, we're ready to turn back. Because you're like, oh, I didn't know it was like this. I didn't know loneliness was set in like this. I didn't know this would happen. I didn't know I, I, I would lose my friends. Oh, I, I didn't know that I, I have to be so dedicated that, that it doesn't matter about anything else. I didn't know that. I didn't know I had to spend minutes into my Bible reading. See, Jesus was telling them, you can come follow me. Come, 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 come follow me. You can do whatever you want, but... Don't follow me thinking that it's this high life of, of being on top of the world because we're not. Because the things of the flesh we have to turn away from. The things of the flesh we can chase after, but you can't take that on the road with God. You can't take that on the road of salvation. You have to leave some things. I have a brand new system I got two years ago, PS5. and um. I love playing video games and I will spend hours on that game. Hours. I will hear the Holy Spirit say, Lou, I keep playing. I'm like, just, just a few more minutes, just a few more minutes. Let me, let me get another round in. And I noticed that he took my desire away from playing because I didn't know how to balance. See, in this relationship with God, you have to learn how to balance. Now, I'm not saying that he don't want you to have fun. But when your head's supposed to be in the word, when you're supposed to pray and you ignore him, he's going to give you little triggers like that. He's going to take my desire to play. But if I ignore, ignore this desire to, to not want to play and just keep playing, he's going to take that away. So he's going to give me back my desire, my desire to play. He gives us free will. But for some of us that are dedicated to the word of God, he will show you, OK, you're having too much time here. So I'm going to take this dedication away, this desire. I'm going to take this desire away, but I need you to see what I'm trying to show you, which is go read your Bible. And if you ignore it, he's going to give it right back to you. And like, okay, you're not paying any attention. I'm just going to let you do what you want to do. And so what I notice is if he allows me to play, if he gives me that desire, I can play a little while. But I'm learning balance where I turn it to the, the game off and I go read my word. I turn the game off and I pray. He will always be there to try to check you and say, hey, this is what you need to do. I'm showing you this is what you need to do. I'm showing you this is what you, you have to say. This, I'm showing you this is what you have to deny. But some of us don't see them. We don't see the stop, yield, yellow light, red light. We go right past those signs because we're too busy trying to do what we want to do and do us. 
We have to start being a people that follow God and not worry about what we have to do, what we think we need to take care of and start worrying about what do he desire? What's his desires for our life? Let's go to another verse, James 2 and 5, chapter 2, verse 5. Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, he has not, he, is, he has not, God, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom? He promised those who love him. See, it says it here, those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith. See, we might not have, some of us might not have these fancy cars. Some of us might not have these fancy houses with these six toilets and four bedrooms and this, that, and the third, but we're rich in faith. And if you're a Christian, you're a believer, you have to know that is gold right there, is to have that much faith, to be rich in faith, and to inherit the kingdom of God. See, people in the world are not going to inherit the kingdom of God because they're chasing things they shouldn't. But when you're a Christ seeker, a flesh denier, you turn your head from things that you you desire into to do things that he desires. That's when you inherit the kingdom of God. When you have God, you have the Holy Spirit to renew your mind every day where you can be a person that he wants you to be. That's in, in trying, that's someone that's poor and poor in trying to inherit the kingdom of God. See, when you try to inherit the kingdom of God and not inherit the things of the earth, your focus is going to be totally different. You work your job, you pay your bills, you make sure food's on the table, clothes in your back, you make sure all this is spanned out, you do what you're supposed to do, but your main goal in life is to inherit the kingdom of God, is to build a relationship with God. Now, I'm not saying, I'm going to clarify this again, I'm not saying that he wants us to be poor, but sometime having the riches of this world will cause you to fade away into the world. It will cause you to look at more what can you have than what you need to do. Your mindset is different when you have money. I can tell you this. Some people be like, well, I'm praying for a supernatural blessing. I want $25,000 sent to my account immediately. I'm not saying God can't do that. I'm not saying that. But why is he going to give you something that he knows is going to make you turn away from him? I've heard people with tons of money, and when you talk to them about God, they don't want to talk about him. Because some of them are ashamed. Some of them don't believe. Some of them be like, well, I go to church. You can go to church every day. You, you, let me put it like this. You can go to church every Sunday. You can go from when church opened at 8, stay until about 2, go to the afternoon service at 3, get out about 8. You can do that every Sunday. But what do you do on Monday? What do you do on Tuesday? What do you do on Wednesday? Do your life makes a representation that you're the same person that's on Sunday? Do your life show that you're working towards God? Or do you do whatever you want to do Monday through Saturday? We have to stop thinking that just because we go to church, this is enough. This, this makes God happy. And it does. Okay, I go to church. Okay, Monday through Saturday, I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to show my behind. I'm going to be angry. I'm going to have road rage. I'm going to have a bitterness. I'm going to drink. I'm going to hit my wife. I'm going to hit my, my, my kids and beat my kids. I'm going to do all these crazy things. But on Sunday when I go to church, I have a halo over my head. I do everything right. I'm, I'm the church secretary. I'm well trusted, well known in the church. But Monday, no one would even recognize you if some of these people seeing you. Our heart needs to be changed. That's what's happening in this world. People, our hearts need to be changed. Bitterness needs to be let go. The road to leading to God needs to be there in your life. It needs to be present. We must chase God. We must chase the Holy Spirit. And I'm not saying you have to chase Him. I'm saying being persistent with your walk with Christ. Chase him. Be next to him. Be in his presence. 
Because what you're chasing for Monday through Saturday, those things are not going to help you build a relationship with Christ. We must be rich in faith to know that whatever we're going through, whatever we don't have, he will provide for us in a way. We have to get to the point, as long as my bills is paid, I have food in, in, the, in the cabinets and my car is filled with gas, I have a nice job, I'm good. I just want a relationship with Christ. Your mind needs to be constantly stayed on him because that's where you will find peace. Okay, I'm going to end this devotional. I pray you all enjoyed this devotional. I did because a lot of times I have a thing where I like my game systems and I like buying different things. But sometimes going out buying different things and doing different things isn't going to cut it. It isn't going to get us into heaven. Having a fancy car isn't going to get us into heaven. But you know what will? Faith. A relationship with Christ. Knowing who he is for you. Is he your savior? Is he your helper? Is he your God? And if you can say yes to this and truly know that you have built a relationship with him, then you're walking in the right direction. But if you can truly sit here and say is that, when I need help, I don't ask for his help. I don't think he, I gave my life to him fully, so he's not my savior. And other things are my God. If you say those things right now, real quickly, say, Jesus, I'm sorry. I give my life to you. I want to turn away from my idols. And I want to follow you. I want to inherit the kingdom of heaven. None of these things on earth means nothing to me. But my relationship with you means everything. Thank you. If you said that prayer, God has forgiven you. I know he has. We have to have faith that he does. He does hear us. We have to have faith that he will forgive us. If you said this, God has forgiven you. You're on a new journey, a new path. Pick up your word, read it, meditate, pray fast, and he will show you. Listen to the past devotions. It guides you into a better, deeper relationship with him. And get, get out of a good church. Find someone to, to help you find a good church. But most of all, depend on him. I hope you all have a blessed day, and I hope you have a great weekend. Thank you. Oh, and remember, Jesus loves you, and I love you too. Okay, bye.